So three certainties in this world are death, taxes, and if you remove meniscus tissue, you will get post menisectomy arthritis. Why? Because we increase local contact stresses. 65% after partial excision, up to 235% after complete excision. This is a nice illustrative example showing post meniscectomy as a dose response. As you remove more meniscus, you increase contact pressures over a smaller surface area, which leads to post meniscectomy arthritis. When you're approaching meniscus repair, you need to have an entire toolbox in your armamentarium, inside out, outside in, and all inside, which we'll be discussing now. So what are the essential elements needed for meniscus repair? Well, it's what I call the ABCs of meniscus repair. You need an anatomic reduction, you need biologic preparation and augmentation where necessary, and circumferential compression, critical elements for successful repair. The reason I like Speed Cinch as an all-inside device is it's ergonomically designed. It's a one-handed operation. It's simple, fast. I like the 2.0 coreless fiber wire because it's friendly to the meniscus. Smaller implants means less trauma to the meniscus. When we look at the needle design, there's a sharp cutting tip and round body that allows easy penetration with minimal tissue damage. And the numbered laser lines are easily readable uh, that measures the depth. The implant is actively expelled past the needle tip, which decreases the depth of penetration. And this is very important because it reduces the needle exposure beyond the meniscus. Why is this important? Well, if you study your MRIs, you see that your neurovascular structures are very close to the posterior aspect of the capsule. How close are we coming? Uh, well, this is a nice paper by the Madrid group that shows on the lateral side of the meniscus from an ipsilateral portal, we're becoming within five millimeters of the popliteal artery and within seven millimeters of the perineal nerve. So it's important to perform these procedures in knee flexion as much as possible, and it's also nice to have a device that's safe that doesn't increase his exposure beyond the capsule. So here's a typical case, 23-year-old, presents with a locked knee, uh, confirmed lateral meniscus bucket handle tear. This is an ideal candidate for an all-inside speed cinch repair. Remember your ABCs, anatomic reduction, biologic preparation, and circumferential compression. Your first stitch is your absolute most important stitch for anatomic reduction. Here we use a vertical uh, mattress stitch for a vertical longitudinal tear. And then we use our knot pusher cutter to really dial in the amount of tension that we want. We don't want to over-tension these repairs. Then we move in that danger zone. So here, rather than performing a vertical mattress suture, I like to perform a horizontal mattress suture, and this showcases the versatility of the speed cinch. Here we don't penetrate as far behind the capsule where we're very close to that popliteal artery. And then if we look at our final construct, we'll place three femoral-sided implants, and most importantly, we'll place two tibial-sided implants. So it's very important to fix the undersurface of the meniscus. Why is that undersurface fixation important? Well, if you only fix the top portion, you're compressing the femoral side of the tear, but you're actually gapping open the medial side of the tear, allowing ingress of synovial fluid, and then you only get partial healing. What you need is you need circumferential fixation and compression. So inside out, we did this stacked vertical mattress technique, and this is something we need to replicate with the all inside technique. If we do that successfully, you get follow-up MRIs that look like this, where the meniscus is very quiet, there's no signal, uh, we're not wondering if it's healed or not healed. As Drew mentioned to you, uh, using the curve is very advantageous. Uh, I'm looking very forward to using that curve bender, and that's gonna allow us to get the undersurface of the uh, meniscus, and possibly a reverse curve in the future will also help that undersurface. Here's another case, 15-year-old football player with an ACL tear, full thickness radial tear, the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. We know these radial tears are sinister tears because as they go through the final 20 to 30 peripheral circumferential collagen fibers, we lose our hoop stress. When we lose our hoop stress, we lose the meniscus function. So here we're performing a horizontal mattress suture for this full thickness radial tear. And what's nice here is you can see the compression of the tear. That knot will eventually go to our first tissue penetration. Then we know that we're fully compressed. Here we get a nice, robust repair uh, that's very satisfying. What about the clinical outcomes of the all inside uh, device? So over 730 cases now in the SOS system. We want to improve pain and function in our patients. So we can see here at six weeks, pain is significantly reduced in these cases. And by three to six months, uh, CUS ADL for function is achieved and very durable over the two-year outcomes. 
So we're going to transition to the knee scorpion. I think the knee scorpion has been an absolute game changer for meniscus repair. If you haven't had this in your hands, it's absolute must in your meniscus repair toolbox. I love it because it's easy to use. It's low profile and curved, gets in the back of the knee. It's single portal, uh, self-retrieving, so it's very efficient. It's versatile, it uses O and 2O suture. You can pass a variety of uh, stitch configurations, including circumferential, horizontal mattress, and as Dr. Stewart will show you, invaluable for root tears. Here's a 15-year-old patient with a horizontal cleavage tear of the posterior horn and body of the lateral meniscus. The time-honored gold standard, of course, would be to resect one of these leaflets and feel all warm and fuzzy about leaving some meniscus remaining. Well, what does that look like? If you look at the contact pressures, A is the normal meniscus, C, this is a single leaflet resection, and D is a double leaflet resection. You actually, there's no difference between single and double leaflet resection for these cleavage tears. What we need to consider in select cases is repairing some of these cleavage tears. And again, it goes back to the ABCs, anatomic reduction, uh, biologic preparation, circumferential compression. You can see here with the knee scorpion, a single pass, self-retrieving through a passport cannula, gives you a nice circumferential compression stitch with 2.0 fiber wire. Here, replace them every five to 10 millimeters, and we get a very nice, robust repair. When we look at it in the lab, uh, here's the native meniscus. You can see that contact area and pressures are abnormal with the horizontal cleavage tear, but restored when you repair it. Well, that's good, but how do they do clinically? Peter Kurzweil just published the systematic review in arthroscopy, nine studies, 98 repairs, and demonstrated that the repair rate of horizontal cleavage tears was very similar to other tears in the literature. If you get into a tight medial compartment, one pearl is considered performing an MCL lengthening with the knee in valgus. You can pepper the femoral sided portion of the MCL to give you two to three millimeters of opening. And what that's going to do for you is turn it in from mission impossible to something that's very accomplishable. What about a radial repair with the knee scorpion? Here's a patient ACL injury and has a double radial tear of the lateral meniscus. Here the scorpion is a very nice option. So again, we want to achieve an anatomic reduction, circumferential compression. So we place our first uh, suture. Again, very nice. That's why I love the scorpion. You can see self-retrieving through your passport cannula. The other reason I like it is because you can very precisely place your neck suture, which allows you to get that anatomic reduction of your tear. And then when you're not tying these, you can just feel the compression going through the tear, uh, which is a very nice feature. I think these radial tears, it's very important. Uh, the strength of your repair is related to the number of sutures that cross the repair site. So one other advantage of the knee scorpion is that it creates a very small perforation, that meniscus. Here we're going to get a total of four sutures in a very small area, which gives us a very nice, uh, robust repair uh, that's uh, hopefully going to heal for us, or at least partially heal. When we look at knot tying for radial repairs compared to inside-out techniques, uh, we find that the knot tying actually better resists cyclic displacement than inside-out sutures and overall is a stronger construct. The final type of tear that we can uh, address is a vertical tear, and we can do this with a, a circumferential compression stitch. We talked about the importance of circumferential compression. Here we can do it with one pass or one stitch rather than multiple stitches in that stacked vertical mattress configuration. The final advantage is that it maintains normal meniscus mobility. When we suture the meniscus to the capsule, we stiffen the meniscus. And I think it's important that we maintain its normal meniscus mobility, especially on the lateral side near the popliteus hiatus. So we should consider augmentation of our repairs, especially in the study of an isolated repair. That is a repair without an ACL injury. We can perform this with a power pick or an awl at the notch. And you see a nice efflux of marrow elements into the joint. And these efflux of marrow elements have actually been showed very nicely in a GOAT model to improve the rates of complete healing, 87% uh, compared to 29% without this bone marrow venting. So in conclusion, it's important we save as much native meniscus as possible. Remember your ABCs of meniscus repair, anatomic reduction, biologic preparation, circumferential compression. The speed cinch in my hands has been very efficient and reliable, and the knee scorpion provides a versatile approach to meniscus repair and completes your meniscus repair toolbox.